Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. I am extremely excited to have you to listen to our podcast messages. We are trusting that the Holy Spirit will bless you. We're going to take you into a message in just a few minutes, amen, where I feel that God is going to give you insight, revelation, and wisdom through the teachings that the Lord has given us to present before you. If you want to get up with us on our website, our website is pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. It is my pleasure and my honor to bring this anointed message to you where I am preaching and teaching under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, giving God's people insight that will strengthen their spiritual walk, build their family, and put under their feet the enemy on every level. Now sit back and enjoy this message. God bless you, my dear friend, and thank you for taking the time to listen to our podcast. Before I start this message, I want to thank every single one of you that have showed a cash app donation to us. We appreciate you and we thank God for the cash app donation that you've sent to us. That is at General Ivory Hopkins. That's cash app at General Ivory Hopkins. We ask anyone that is blessed by our teachings to show at least a $5 donation just to be a blessing to the work of the Lord that we are doing. And we're trusting that this word and these messages will actually be a blessing. Well, the title of the message today on our podcast, the General of Deliverance podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. By the way, you that are on YouTube, we want you to go ahead and subscribe. Amen. And like Facebook Live, we want you to continue watching us. Amen. As we teach this message on why didn't she just leave the man? We're talking about the wisdom from Abigail. Now, many of you, I am sure, in your lifetime, you have seen the amazing woman of God by the name of Abigail. And her, her, her ways have been absolutely like a phenomena and a mystery. There are some of you that are out here that we're living in a time, glory be to God, when things don't go well, when things look like they're not suiting you, we go ahead and leave somebody, divorce, separate, just walk out of the relationship. Well, let me tell you all something. There are some of us out here in this world, some people in this world that deal with situations where walking away just wasn't the answer. And it was amazing how Abigail, I use her as an example, how Abigail did not walk away from her marriage, did not walk away from the relationship. Things ended up working out for her. But I'm going to show you some things and the example of using Abigail's life. An amazing woman of God. I'm going to let me jump on here. Now, it comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 3. 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 3. And if any of you are just tuning in to our podcast, we want to thank you for joining the General of Deliverance podcast. We appreciate you. We appreciate you also for sending a $5 donation, amen, that helps in the work that we're doing to Cash App General Ivory Hopkins. Let's go on into this message. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 3, it talks about Abigail and her husband Nabal. Nabal. Now listen to what it says in 1 Samuel 25 and verse 3. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife was Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish, churlish, and evil in his doing, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, here goes the amazing thing. Abigail is contracted in marriage to Nabal. I'll say his name either Nabal or Nabal. Either way, amen, you get what I'm talking about. But check this out about their lives. Amen. This woman of God is married to a man that is kind of church and evil in his doings. Matter of fact, the name Abigail means cause of joy, or her father's joy. That's what it means in Hebrews. So here we go. We've got Abigail, who is her father's joy. Amen. She causes joy, and she ties her life to a man named Nabal, and the name Nabal, or Nabal, means fool or senseless. Now, often in the Hebrew, the names of a person actually manifest as the character and nature of an individual. Now, let's go on and look at this thing here. In 1 Samuel 25 and verse 14, 
And now, one, now Nabal had a crop of uh, a large herd, and David's men had protected this herd. And Nabal decided that he was going to rail on David, let David know, I'm not going to give you nothing for protecting my herd. I'm not going to pay you any money. And David was getting ready to destroy Nabal. But the thing that is amazing about this is, here this woman is married to a man that does things that can endanger the whole family and the entire business. Check this out. 1 Samuel 25, 14 says, But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on him. And, but the men were very good unto us. Now, and listen to this. So she's married to a man that has such an attitude that he sort of kind of got away. Sometimes I think he even embarrasses her. Now, anybody ever lived like this? Now, but check this out. But yet this lady never left him. Listen at this. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the field. And they were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, check this out. Now, therefore, know and consider. Now, the servant comes to Abigail because he could not go to Nabal. Now, isn't that funny? Somebody out here listening at me, you are in a situation, in a marriage, in a relationship that people will come to you, family, children will come to you because the person that you're married to is so difficult, so unagreeable, so hard to live with that they won't even approach them. Now, check this out here. Now, therefore, know and consider, verse 17, what thou would do, for evil is determined against our master and against all of his household. So Nabal turns around and does something out there with his attitude that puts everybody in danger. But she never left him. Why didn't she just leave? I'm going to keep saying that. Now, my point is not telling someone to leave somebody, but I, my point is that there are people out here that deal with situations in your marriage, in your relationship, that you just don't leave. You just don't just walk away. Now, therefore, know and consider that thou would do evil unto us is determined against our master and against all his household. He is such a son of Belial that no man can talk, speak to him. Now, this term, son of Belial, the meaning of that is means wickedness or worthlessness. Belial is a demon mentioned frequently in the apocalyptic literature. It is identified in Christian tradition with the devil or Satan. And in the Old Testament and the rabbinical literature means worthlessness or wickedness. Here is a godly, wise, beautiful woman of God. Married to a son of an isle, a man that, listen what it says here a little bit further. In 1 Samuel 25, 17, it said that a man cannot speak to him, meaning nobody can tell him anything. Now, let's get this set up. She's married to an individual that is such a hassle, so toxic, that nobody can tell him nothing that he will go off on people even if it get, risks the whole family. That was who she was married to. But yet, she didn't leave. Are you hearing me? Once again, the topic that I'm trying to say is, why didn't she just leave? I'm going to tell you why she didn't just leave. Because there are some people in life that in their marriage, in their situation, they are placed there. And God has not told them to leave. Now, I'm not talking about Nabal was beating her half to death. Nabal was taking, hey man, uh, 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 just treating her any kind of way. But he was difficult. And Abigail, the custom of her culture was that when a wife was married to a husband, other than adultery itself, she would remain with him. And in this case, God never dealt with her to leave. Now, y'all may get out. Now, I know we're living in modern days. Some of us in modern days would get mad and say, well, I'm out. I'm out. I don't care what I don't care what it says. But guess what? 
There are some of you listening at me right now. I'm talking to you. There is a wife listening to me right now, and you are not going to leave, but the husband you married is difficult. He may not have been very difficult in the beginning. In the early years of y'all's marriage, he may not have shown this character, but here you are thinking to yourself. Now, somebody, I'm going to say it again. Somebody listening at me is in that position right now. I counsel people every day, and every now and then, I will meet a wife, a godly, spirit-filled, loving God wife whose husband is a hassle, that he does everything but beat her and run on her, and she is married, and guess what? She looks at me clearly and says, Brother Hopkins, I am miserable. Brother Hopkins, my husband has got such and such an attitude like Nabal, but at the same time, God has not told me to leave, and I'm not busting a move at all. I'm remaining faithful to God. Now, listen at this, and faithful to my marriage vow, 1 Samuel 25 and 18. And I know this is the type of message that many of us who live in our modern times, we go, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. I said, that's why I entitled this message, Why Didn't She Just Leave the Man? And this was wisdom from Abigail. Now, verse 25, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 25 and 18. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measure of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on her ass. Now, check this out. And she said unto her servant, go on before me. I, I, and I come after you. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. Now, first of all, let's back it up. She went behind her husband back to save them all. Now, isn't that unique? Now, I know us in church would have a fit. My God, what a Jezebelic, rebellious wife she was. This woman had to make a decision that would save the entire family. And there's some of you out here. Now, somebody might say, Brother Hopkins, you're on your podcast. You're teaching women to be rebellious to their husband. I am telling you that in life, everything is not so black and white. It's not so simple. It's not so easy. There comes a time that that, that when a mate does something so foolish, when a mate can't be talked to, that it will force a person, force a woman to make a decision or else everybody was in trouble. Because the real deal was this. Had she not did what she did behind his back. Now, that's the deep thing. She went behind his back. I'm going to read it to you again. She said unto her servants, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. She went behind her husband's back to save them all. Listen to me. There are some of you sitting out there right now. The only reason why your home is being held up by the grace of God and blessed by the grace of God is because you had to do what was right despite the foolishness of your mate. I'm sorry it happens. I'm sorry people go through this, and I hate to put it on here like this, but it is, as the old saying goes, it is but what it is. Now let me go on a little bit further. In verse 20, and it was so as she rode on the ass that she came down by the covered covered of the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. 21. David had said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertains unto him. And he hath required me evil for good. Now, have you ever had a situation wherein you had to speak good over the evil that your mate spoke? Your mate went off, done something crazy, said something crazy. This is a real reality. Like I said, I know there are people that will hear me say this and go, Brother Aubrey, you sure you should teach that? Let me tell you something. Everything in the Bible is the nature of humanity and what people go through. Here was a godly woman who had married a son of an isle, who had married a worthless man, who had married a man that was evil. He would go off. He was a drunk. That's who she was married to. And guess what? She did not leave him. 
Are you hearing me? I say again, the title of the message is, why didn't she just leave the man? But she remained in her marital status and covered the family. She covered areas that the fool wouldn't cover. She protected the family and the business where he would not. Let me go on a little bit further. So, and the more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertains to him by the morning light, any that piss him against the wall. Now, David in verse 25, 22, chapter 25, 22 of 1 Samuel, David says, I'm going to kill everything. I'm going to go out there and kill everything that piss against the wall. In other words, he's going to take out every male. He was going to take them out. And verse, verse 23, I love this. And Abigail saw David. She hastened and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face. Listen at this. And bowed herself to the ground. In other words, she stood in the gap of judgment for her husband and her family. Now, once again, to some of you listening to me, I can't believe that woman went over the head of her husband. Had she not went over the head of her husband, she would have been killed and every male and every worker that worked for them would have been killed. David was going to slay everybody, but it was Abigail's steadfastness. It was Abigail's faithfulness to God and to common character that saved the whole family. Now, this is the funny thing, guys. In this particular teaching, uh, Abigail actually... This issue was not with God. The issue was with the way that her husband dealt with mankind. And there are some of you out here, you are married to a mate that's done some twisted stuff to folk. Amen. And the stuff that that mate did, yes, I'm going to say it, the stuff that that man did caused problems for you and all of the family. First Samuel 25, 24. And, and listen, and she fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. What? She's going to David saying, let this iniquity be on me. Now check this out. And let thy handmaiden, I pray thee, speak in thine audience. Now check this out. Thing was, actually, she going over her husband's head was asking David permission to, rec to speak in the defense of our family. But she said, let this iniquity be on me. In other words, she stood in the midst of that situation that her husband had created because of the way he was. No man could tell him anything. Are y'all hearing me? He risked his whole family with his attitude, acting up, cutting the fool. He said, upon me. She said, upon me and upon me, let this iniquity be. And let thine handmaiden, I pray thee, speak in thine audience. And hear the words of thine handmaiden. Now look at this here. And verse 25, 25, 1 Samuel 25, 25. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. Now wait a minute. Abigail actually spoke to David by what she knew her husband was. Now listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. Listen, just like Evelyn, Evelyn knows whether I'm a fool or a wise man. Evelyn knows whether my attitude is something that embarrasses her and she has to speak up on the behalf of my foolishness. She knows. So did this woman's maid. He said, let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. His name and, and folly is with him. For I, thine handmaiden, saw not the young men of the Lord whom thou didst send. She said, I didn't see them. Because if I had have seen them, I would have done what my husband would not do. If I, David, if your men had come to me, I wish you hadn't gone to my husband. And it's sad, but somebody out there is living like this. See, what I love about the Bible, guys, let me say this on this podcast. What I love about the word of God is some people say to me, well, the Bible's written so many years ago and you make a reference to the Bible. Let me tell you something. The Bible might have been written so many years ago, but human nature has not changed. 
As long as man has been created, there's always been wise men and, and fools men. There's always been good women and bad women. Human nature has not changed. Some of these things are in people's character. And in Abigail's and Nabal's situation, this woman married a man and she knew her husband was bound up. She lived and understood his stronghold. Are you living with somebody and understanding their stronghold? And it is annoying and it is frustrating and it has caused problems in the family and it has caused separation and it has caused division. Come on, somebody. Have you lived like that? And it ain't enough to say I'm going to divorce them, but it is enough to say if I don't do something, even going against what they're doing, because what they're doing is wrong. They're going to mess up the whole family. Now, listen, my friends, you are listening to Apostle Ivory Hopkins, amen, glory be to God. And this is the General of Deliverance podcast. Now, let me go on to 1 Samuel 25 and verse 26, 25 and 26. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, seeing the Lord have withholden thee from coming to shed blood and for avenging thyself in mine own hands, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And look at verse 27. In, tw in verse 27, 1 Samuel 25, 27. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. In short, Abigail paid the bill out of the house money, out of the holdings that they had. Abigail took and made a judgment. She was forced into a judgment because of where Nabal put her in. There are people out here right now, as I said, listening to the sound of my voice. You have had to make decisions in your home. You didn't want to do it. You didn't want to be rebellious, but you had to do it. Because had you not, Nabal, the fool, Nabal, the worthless man, would have brought everybody in bandage, in bondage. For Samuel 25 and 28, I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battle of the Lord, and evil have not been found in thee all thy days. She interceded for him, for David, and she also stood in the midst for her household and all of her servants. Listen, people of God, this is going on in the modern day. It may not be over cattle and herds. It may not be over that. But there are many of you who love God that you have had to do something or else the foolishness. You've got someone in your life that you can't tell nothing. They don't talk to you. They don't listen to you. And guess what? It will force you to have to protect your household. Many times you're listening at me. Now, like I said, there will be others that can hit me up on Zoom and Facebook or whatever and criticize this message. Guess what? I'm not going to worry about that because I'm preaching reality, and y'all know it. In reality, you, some of you have had mothers that have had your daddy, right, was just like Nabal. You know what I'm talking about. Such a son of a liar, nobody could tell him nothing. Nabal would get on a drunken binge. Now, isn't it amazing? Here is a drunken can't tell anybody, bad attitude man that even the people who worked for him said that dude is a piece of work. They knew it. And Abigail saved their family. Had she not did what she did, he would have wiped out the and got David would have wiped out the entire family. In the modern day, sometimes there are situations that are hard to live with. But no why, but 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 wise prudence just says don't walk away. Now prudence is to act with or showing care and thought for the future. So I've talked to people, many women I have talked to, that have said, my husband is like Nabal. He's hard to deal with. He's difficult. But God has not told me to go anywhere. And also people stay in unhealthy relationships because they believe. They have invested significant time and energy in it. Some may stay due to fear of being alone or because they believe they won't find anyone else. Are you hearing me? 
Others may stay because of financial, emotional dependency, feeling guilty about leaving. That's why. Are you hearing me? Listen to me real good. Some of you uh, hear my heart now. I know I'm going to sound like an old dude, but I am an old dude, and I don't mind saying that I am an old dude who's lived in this planet for a while. There are some people at your young age, you might say, huh, I'd leave and go start my own thing. And there's somebody my age and older running 67 and 70 years old, and you've been living with Nabal that long, amen, and you're not ready to just walk away and just walk into nothing because of financial reasons. Because of reason, other, other emotional reasons. It is, it, people are living this. I've talked to people that I've listened to them, almost felt like crying and go like, man, I don't know how they live like that. But at the same time, they got nowhere to go. They've invested so much of their life and time. Their children are grown and gone. And Nabal is still acting as crazy as what he was when the kids were there. This woman is the kind of woman that had taken care of everybody, stood in the gap to, of a lot of situations, and Nabal has been cutting the fool, acting up, wilding out, and she has remained there. And, at her early, and in the early age of her life, her commitment to God did not tell her to divorce, leave, or walk away. And her commitment to God and family, in her heart, in her belief, in her belief, I'm not just leaving and walking away. And like I said, I know we live in a society that says, hmm, it was me. Hmm, I'm out. I wouldn't take that stuff. Yes, it's easy to say when you don't have the dynamics that this person is living in. Right now, I'm going to say this here boldly. This podcast today is for the women who are living with Nabal and you have nowhere to go. And God has not told you to leave. You, you have lived with his foolishness for so many years. And I will say to some of you, I'm not talking about beating you in the brains out. I'm not talking about abuse like that. I'm telling you, some of you, you know that they are a fool. You know that they are a fool in their actions. Guess what? You're going to have to sometimes say, you know what? I ain't going to work. I ain't losing everything we got. I ain't got the time to rebuild like that. I'm not no spring chicken, and I don't have time to do that. And I'm not walking away from everything that we built. And sometimes you have to say, you know what? I'll keep doing what I've been doing. When that fool does something foolish. Now, when that foolish person, because I'll get somebody to hit me up. The Bible says you call no man fool. Okay, okay, okay. I know we're living in this period of time. When that foolish person does something foolish, do what you've been doing all of your life. Rescue when you have to. And then let them own their ways when it's on them. You've lived this all along. Concentrate on your God. Concentrate on building your life. Make sure that you don't allow the enemy and their foolishness to cause you and your children to be messed up. Are you hearing me? But sometimes there are those like Abigail who just didn't leave. See, before David met her, and most of y'all know the story because of the Bible, your Bible readers, uh, 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 Nabal ended up dying, and I'm not preaching here. After a while, your husband will die, and you'll be in good shape. I'm not even going there. Right now, I'm ministering on how and why some of the people out here are surviving. They are surviving in the midst of a situation like this, and I get it. Look, I have an amazing 43-year marriage. I am very blessed. My marriage is very solid. Thank God for that. But I'm preaching right now and ministering right now reasonable common sense to those who don't have that same dynamic. Now, some people tend to believe that the reason why people take uh, put up with so much stuff because they've grown accustomed to people who treat them badly. And so they hook up with someone in a relationship and marry someone who is very hurtful and does not actually give them the love and the concern and the voice, and you ended up marrying Nabal. Got that? Listen at this. Number two, sometimes it's, it's easier to prefer the bad relationship than the unknown one. That is in some cases. The, this is the biggest reason most of us stay in dysfunctional, hurtful relationship. We may despise the person and the relationship, we, but we hate the uncertainty of change. Are you hearing me? I said it earlier, 
Some prefer a bad relationship over being alone. In Abigail's, re uh, in Abigail's marriage, Abigail had a bad marriage. It's no if and, and buts about it. She had a bad marriage. But Abigail remained faithful, and she did what she do when this man, when this Belial, son of Belial, would do something crazy, she would go on the defense. Got that? A people, we have to learn, glory be to God, how to understand that there are folks that are out here that are going through situations in their relationship. I say this to you. Some of you have watched your mother go through this with your father, and you said so easily, mama ought to just leave. If it was me, I wouldn't put up with that. But you see, your mama is in a situation like Abigail. She has not been told to leave. Her belief system, her beliefs and her hope in God is not to go. Is God give me strength. And then, as I said, there's a number of other components connected. Now, I know this message that I'm talking about today is not an easy one. I know we like to have it. Brother Ivy, it's got to be a quicker answer than that. There are people who live this every day. There are some who live it and their mate has passed on and they didn't wish they were dead either, but they lived a life with a neighbor, such a son of a lion that no man can tell him anything. That's tough. Abigail's name means the cause of joy or her father's joy in Hebrew. Nabal's name meant fool or senseless. And that's the way he operated. So there are some of you, amen, that you're trying to wonder, God, now I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. Some people right now, I'm not talking to some of y'all right there. Because you see, you're not living this like they are. Some of you that are listening at the sound of my voice, the Holy Spirit has not told you anything. All you know is, is that I'm going to remain. I pray that my husband change. I pray that this yoke get broken off of his life. But in the process of time, what do I do, God? God, teach me how to tap into you and how to do my life in you, how to do my life. And guess what? When I have to, when you have to make a decision that doesn't cause y'all to all go under because of him, you're going to make that decision and live with it. You've been doing it all your life. Once again, I'm talking about the real world right now. I know in church we like to say, well, that's the spirit of Jezebel. Abigail did not have no spirit of Jezebel. Matter of fact, Abigail had her own self, her own spirit. Abigail was a beautiful, wise woman who had been given in a contractual marriage to a fool. And that marriage contract she wasn't about to break it. See, they were a little bit different in that time and period than we are today. And today, hey, any excuse to do today. And I'm not judging you over it. I'm just saying you got to understand there are Abigails out here. I'm talking to y'all, Abigails, that you throughout your entire marriage have done things to hold it together because he kept doing foolish things. Now, you, when you look at this man's life, he was an alcoholic out of control. He was a businessman with a successful business who actually was foolish when it comes to the help that others were giving him. He was very arrogant and very selfish, and, the, and his servant said it well. You know that my master is such a son of a liar that can't nobody tell him nothing. He was a man that you couldn't tell him nothing. Are you hearing me? And that's who this woman lived with. That's who she ate with. That's who she slept with. A man that you couldn't tell anything. So guess what? Abigail knew. Now, listen, let me tell, show you another thing about Abigail. She knew it was no need of going to him because he was going to cut the fool. She knew it was no need of trying to talk to him about this because he does this type of thing, and she's always bailing him out. I know some of them ladies listening at this go, hmm, I get taught that brother, and he'd be gone tomorrow morning. It's easy to say because it's not your dynamic. It's easy to say because it's not your experience. Right now, again, I'm speaking to the women out there, the sisters out there that have married themselves on the ball, married themselves a senseless, worthless, foolish man that nobody can tell anything. 
while we that uh, don't have that problem will sit back. Now, that was very Jezebelic. How dare she rise up and, and, and listen, when she, she, it would be almost like she went in the bank account and rescued something that was going to create a problem and destroy them all. Did you get that? She actually, all that she gave David and his men, I tell you what, the tally of that financially back there then, that was quite a bit. But had she not did that, the whole house would have came down. There are many women of God out there that you have made decisions that have saved the family. Had you not, it would have took you all down. I hate to say in the real world, this happens. My prayer to God is that you don't have to live like that, that you don't have to do that. Now, somebody might say, well, Brother Ivory, suppose you were such a fool like that and Evelyn had to protect herself and the family. I'm going to tell you what I know. she do it. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? And guess what? I am God's over me and Evelyn. I am the head of the house, and Evelyn and I are co-head and co-workers together in God. We submit one towards another. Are y'all hearing me? We don't have an issue about our, our spiritual headship because I look at spiritual headship and covering is more protection, provision, love, and keeping that person's life together. Amen. And y'all living and loving each other in submission. I look at it that way and it's worked 43 years for us. But I'm going to tell you this. At the end of the day, if I was foolish and was so sure, so foolish, so can't nobody tell me nothing. And she's seeing us getting ready to go down a shipwreck and get ready to mess up our whole home and lose everything we got. Evelyn is going to do what it takes to stop us from losing it. That's what Abigail did. That's the life that she had to live. And there are people who are living this. And like I said, some of y'all going at me. Guess what? Bring it. Guess what? I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you because that's an, it happened in the Bible. It happened in this person's life. What I love about the Bible when it tells uh, stories of life, when it tells stories of life, I love that about the Bible because, you see, many of us Christians try to make everything black or white. It's not that so simple. All things are not that simple, my dear friend. There are people who love God who are living just like Abigail did. You're hearing my voice right now. And I tell you, I believe that God will direct you, sister, on what to do to protect you all. I believe that with all of my heart. Brother Hopkins, you're saying God will have her to rebel. Listen, <laughs> sweetheart, <laughs> there are people that if you don't make the wise decision, the foolish one will take you all out. My prayer to God is that he changes. And this is tough. Brother Aubrey, you're talking about the men right now. Well, so it is. He was a man, wasn't he? Got that? We ain't confused about what Nabal was. He was a man. And Abigail was a woman. Got it? So guess what? He was a foolish man. The Bible said he was a son of a mile. In short, the, the truth of the matter, uh, I, I'm going to tell the truth and shame three devils. This man had a demon. Matter of fact, when they called him the son of Belial, remember when I pulled that up? Let me look at it again in my notes. This word Belial is a demon mentioned frequently in the apocalyptic literature. So it is saying this man had a demon. Let me get this thing up here. Let me get this up here because I like that. You know how I am. I'm a delivering soldier, and I love really uh, jamming something because you can't get away from the truth that I'm saying right now. I am telling the truth. You can get mad all you want to. You can at me all you please, but you know right what I'm telling the truth. Let's look at this right here. Number one, the word son of Belial means worth, wickedness and worthlessness. Wickedness or worthlessness. That's what the son of Belial means. And the word Belial is a demon mentioned frequently in the apocalyptic literature. So in short, Abigail had a man that had a spirit in him. It, it was also identified in Christian tradition with the devil or Satan. In the Old Testament and rabbinical literature, it was considered worthlessness or wickedness. There is a spirit called Belial, and he was operating as a son of Belial. That's what the scripture says. And that demon in him, that stronghold in him was getting ready to cause the whole family. Don't, too, 
Don't y'all mess around and let somebody's demon in y'all's relationship destroy you all. Don't y'all mess around and play around with some demon that's in someone that won't submit to God, that will not submit to the word of God, will not submit to truth. Don't you let that spirit destroy y'all because it will if it is allowed to. Nabal, when he, after he came out of his drunken stupor, his drunken stupor, he eyes opened up and he realized, oh my God, many times, I'm going to say this, many times foolish men, when they wake up and become sober, they realize, oh my God, you mean I created that problem in my drunkenness? Yep. You mean to tell me I wilded out like that in my drunkenness? I remember years ago, and you know, as a kid, I watched the old, some old people. You know how you used to be a kid? Kid were seen and not heard. <laughs> and I watched one time an older gentleman cut up, and I mean, he was drunk, and he was acting so foolish and done such stupid stuff. And when he came to himself the next day, he said, oh, my God, I did that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what this woman was living with, okay? That's what she was living with. And listen, Abigail did not wake up and go, hmm, I don't need no man to tell me what to do. I do whatever I want to do. Abigail had to rescue herself and the entire family. And she rescued him. Now, later on, he dies. And yet I'm sad to hear the way that he died. And Abigail becomes David's wife who becomes Solomon's mother. Solomon's mother was a woman who had a husband, her first husband, who died, was a fool. He was a worthless man. He, he, he operated under the son of Belial, such a wicked man. Nobody could tell that man nothing. And she went from there, and God rewarded her. God rewarded her before she married David. Let me tell you straight up. God rewarded her before she married David because God protected that house. That woman of God protected the house of Nabal. Y'all, mm, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm saying to you. That woman protected the house of Nabal. She protected the name of Nabal. She protected the economic value. She protected all the brand, everything that he had. She protected it. But in order to protect it, she had to make sure she did not submit to the wisdom of a fool. She protected the home by not allowing the foolish bondage in her husband to destroy everybody. And there are people out here living like this. I know that we are touching on sacred cows. I know that we are messing with stuff, but this is the style of teaching that I do. I teach deliverance. And I am what I, call, what I call a spiritual realist, meaning when I look at the Bible and look at life, I just call it what it is. This woman was married in a bad situation, a rough situation. It's tough. And she had to do what she had to do. This woman covered and protected her husband. Sometimes when you got a fool, you got to cover the fool. You may not leave, but you got to cover the fool. You got to cover the children. You got to cover the house. You got to cover everything that you have because a fool doesn't see it. I, but when that fool wakes up, that foolish man wakes up, he will realize, my God, I've been doing this and chasing and running around. Come on. Many of us men right now, in the sound of my voice, you know what I'm talking about. Back in the day, amen, all this was a fool, chasing skirt, chasing this, chasing that. And now today in your older years, you look at a wife that put up with your stuff, put up with your boosters, put up with your ways. It had not been for her, the children would have been scattered and your children would have been having no foundation whatsoever. Abigail became a foundation because her husband wasn't one. Just, just the way it is. Now, guess what, folk? I'm going to pray for the sisters that are going through this right now. And I make no apologies for this message because everything I said was straight up correct, and I know it. I wasn't trying to teach or, or try to convey a message of rebellion against your husband. But I'm trying to tell you that there are people out there that by the grace of God, you know what their miracle is? Their miracle is that God kept them in the midst of a situation such as this. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, I ask you, God, to bless 
and break the yokes over every family and marriage, every relationship that has gone through warfare like this. I ask you in the name of Jesus for your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to loose the yokes, Father, to break the strongholds that operates, Father. Lord, God, Abigail was an amazing example of a woman that stayed with her husband, that loved her husband, who was a fool, who did self-sabotaging things that cost the whole family. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you lift the weariness and the heaviness and the brokenness that they're going through. Father, I ask in the name of Yeshua that, oh God, in Yeshua's name, that you bring healing to her. I pray that her husband changes. I pray that he gets a revelation and comes out of the stronghold of the spirit of Belial, a marriage breaking spirit, a hard to live with demon. Cause some people are living in houses with people that are hard to live with. They don't make your life easy at all. My prayer to God is that God, Break the yokes and strongholds in that home. My prayer to God is that he give you strength while you're in the midst of this warfare. And Lord God, their children, yes, God, their children. Lord God, let their children see the goodness of God that has kept them through a godly mother. The goodness of God that had protected them when their father was cutting the food, when he was acting up, when he would not listen to nobody. Let them see that mama did not attack him, but she had to protect the whole family because no one else was. She had to make a decision because the decision that was made by him would have destroyed everybody. There are some listening right now at this podcast that you know what I'm talking about. I ask the Holy Spirit to heal your grief, heal your pain, save, Lord God, save, save their husband. Deliver them. And there are some that are already in church, brother, but you're a piece of work to live with. Just because you're in church and you got a Bible and you quote scriptures don't mean that you are not difficult because of the fruit. Because you see some folks got fruit in their life. Their fruit is messed up. Lord God, deliver that person that looks like they're real super righteous man of God, but a difficult person to live with. No, won't, can't nobody tell them nothing. And many times she's had to do things that look like rebellion but actually was survival because of him. God, I ask this healing. I ask this breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, guys, I'm going to tell you like I usually do. Amen. I want you to always to know that God, he is watching. Listen, if this has been a blessing to you again, you've been listening to the General of Deliverance, Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Cash app us a $5 donation at General Ivory Hopkins. That's our cash app name, General Ivory Hopkins. Cash App us a donation. Evelyn and I will appreciate it. God bless you, and we will take you in another teaching. By the way, subscribe to our YouTube. Subscribe to our podcast. We want to build up those numbers of people that are listening and telling others. Tell others about these teachings. Amen? Well, as I usually say to you, my friends, always remember that God, he is watching. God bless you, soldiers. I'm out. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, praise God. I trust that you enjoyed that message. Well, look, my dear friend, this is Apostle Hopkins. Amen. And I'm getting ready to get on up out of here. Look, if you want to sow a donation and bless us, you can do it on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. Or you can go to our cash app and make a cash app donation to General Ivory Hopkins. It's just simply General Ivory Hopkins. It has been my pleasure amen, to bring to you the things pertaining to kingdom, life, and family. So I trust these podcasts blesses you, and I'm going to catch you guys in another teaching. God bless. Bye-bye.